Since launching this channel, one question kept nagging me. How many subscribers are there now? When I opened the stats page for the hundredth time, I realized this couldn't go on. The solution turned out to be simple. Make that number always visible, no matter what I'm doing. So today, in the MVP in 48 Hours series, I'm building a subscriber counter for any YouTube channel that lives in the Mac OS menu bar. First, let's decide what this will look like. We know it'll be a number in the menu bar, but what exactly should the UI be? There are three options. Option one, show just the number. But if your menu bar is crowded, like mine, it won't be obvious what that number represents. Option two, add a label before the number. For example, subscribers or the channel name. The problem is it takes too much horizontal space, which we don't really have up there. Option three, show an icon alongside the number. This is my favorite. It should end up both compact and clear. The key is designing an appropriate icon. So let's start with planning. Today I'll be using Trello. I used to work with it all the time, now less often, but for today's project, it's a perfect fit. It will allow me to conveniently visualize the full scope of tasks and build the right sequence for completing them. I divided all tasks into two groups, coding tasks and support tasks, and assigned them corresponding labels for clarity. Everything related to coding will have a blue label, while the other tasks will have a green one. The very first task I need to tackle is choosing a name for the app. And I see two possible approaches here. Option one is to invent a completely new word that doesn't exist on the internet yet. The upside is obvious. The name would be unique, easy to find, and memorable. But the downside is that on its own, it wouldn't mean much to future users. A name like that always needs a short tagline or at least a few words to explain what the app actually does. Option two is to use words or parts of words that directly hint at the app's core functionality. The advantage here is that just by hearing the name, people can already guess what the app is about. The drawback, though, is higher competition because most of the popular keywords and their combinations are probably already taken. For this project, I'll go with the second approach. So what do we have to work with? The word counter is an obvious choice. It captures the main idea of the app. Then we've got subscribers and YouTube. Let's try a few combinations. Subscribers, counter. Not bad, but too vague. It's unclear what kind of subscribers we're talking about. YouTube counter. Better, but still not specific. There are many things you could count on YouTube. YouTube subscribers. Also decent, but it sounds a bit like an analytic service, or worse, a subscriber boosting service. So it looks like two word combinations aren't quite enough. We'll need three. YouTube subscribers counter. Yes, it's a bit long, but it's clear, straightforward, and explains exactly what the app does. I like it. Let's stick with this one. With the name decided, the next step is to add it in App Store Thumect and check if it's available. Because if someone already uses this name, I won't be able to create an app with it. Fortunately, everything looks good, the name is unique, and no one's using it in the App Store. So, we're ready to begin development. But before I jump into actually building the app, there's one more step I need to take. I have to look at the YouTube API, find the right endpoint that returns the channel's subscriber account, and then grab an API key to use it. Normally, Google's documentation can be pretty overwhelming. But in this case, I only need a single endpoint, so it was easy to track down and the description is clear enough. I don't expect any major issues. Still, just to be safe, I want to test the endpoint in the console first and make sure it behaves exactly the way I need. So I wrote a tiny script, just a few lines of code. Let's run it. Great, it works perfectly. With that out of the way, I can finally move into Xcode and start building the app itself.
All right, let's see what we've got. I'll run the project, wait for it to compile. Good, no errors. The app launches and we can see the subscriber count right there in the menu bar. If I click on the text, a pop-up appears with some extra channel info and I can also refresh the counter manually whenever I want. Looks good, I'm happy with this. So, the app already does its main job, it shows the number of subscribers, but there are still a few finishing touches left. Right now, the API key and the channel ID are hard-coded into the code. Since every user will have their own, the app needs to ask for those the first time it runs and then save them somewhere. That's a task for tomorrow. For today, I think we're done. Time to step away from the screen and enjoy some fresh air. So today I've got a few small finishing touches left for the app, along with a bunch of supporting work that needs to be done to publish it in the AMP Store. As you remember, at the very beginning, I had hard-coded the API key and the channel ID directly into the code. Now that's fixed. The app asks for them on first launch, and you can change them later if needed. I also added two extra buttons. One opens the settings window, which you've already seen, and the other simply quits the app. And finally, I gave the design a little polish, adjusted the spacing, improved the alignment. Overall, it looks cleaner. From a technical perspective, the app is now ready for submission to the App Store. The first step in getting my app ready for release is creating its icon. To get some inspiration, I asked AI to generate a few relevant ideas. A good starting point. Okay, the overall direction is clear. YouTube colors, a hint of subscribers, some numbers. So I tried to combine all of that into a single design. And here's the result. I'm not a designer by any means, but honestly, I'm happy with it. And of course, if needed, the icon can always be updated in future versions. Next, it's time to create a few screenshots of the app. These are required when submitting the app for review. Since this is a small app, I only need two, one showing the main pop-up with all the key channel information and another showing the settings window. All right, everything looks ready. So now it's time to fill out the submission form and send the app for review in the App Store. First, I'll upload the screenshots I created earlier. Then I'll fill in the promotional text and the description fields. There's one important detail here. You also need to provide the reviewer with all the additional information they'll need to fully test the app. Otherwise, the review won't be successful. In my case, that means including the API key and the YouTube channel ID. Everything seems to be in order, so let's go ahead and submit it for review. Now the big question is, will it get approved? This morning started with great news an email from Apple confirming that my app has been approved and is now live in the App Store. Here it is, ready for anyone to download. If you have your own YouTube channel, check the link in the description and give it a try. And with that, another project in my MVP in 48 hours series is complete. Let me know in the comments what kind of project you would like to see next. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you soon. Take care.